perhaps we can get uh, started. Uh, welcome, uh, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Alberto Toscano. I uh, teach and research here at the School of Communication. And I would like to warmly welcome you to the symposium on indigenous politics in Chile 50 years after the coup. On behalf of my co-organizers, Benjamin Bryce from UBC Latin American Studies, and Andres Cabrera, a Chilean historian and doctoral candidate at Goldsmiths University in London. So this event was generously supported by the Faculty of Communication, Art, and Technology Dean's Event Fund, the School of Communication at SFU, UBC Latin American Studies, as well as Indigenous Studies, International Studies, and the Office of Community Engagement at SFU, and Critical Indigenous Studies at the University of British Columbia. I thank everyone involved, as well as our administrator at um, communication, Gary Chow, um, for making it possible for our Chilean colleagues, Elisa Ancon and Fernando Padican, to join us for this important dialogue today. Together with John Mack from UBC Allard School of Law, uh, and Andres, who will also be speaking on the panel later. Um, I myself was not yet born at the time of uh, uh, the coup, but uh, I just wanted to say a, a couple of reasons why, uh, a couple of words about why uh, I felt compelled, let's say, to uh, uh, collaborate in organizing uh, this, uh, this event. Um, my family was in Chile at the time. Uh, my brother was born in Santiago in 72. My mother was studying at the Universidad de Chile, uh, in fact, with Marta Haneke in 1973. And my father was working uh, in the Italian embassy uh, during uh, the coup, where along with colleagues and diplomats from many other countries, he worked to provide political asylum for the hundreds of people hunted down by the regime in its avowed aim to extirpate any kind of socialism or emancipation from Chile. Um, that familial link and example, as well as later stays in Chile, most recently in 2017, where I got to meet Andres, uh, political and intellectual friendships, and uh, especially the inspiring social and political movements, especially of the past decade and a half, um, beginning at least in my perception with the student movements of the early 2010s, was a spur to thinking um, really about how to mark this uh, 50th uh, anniversary, not only with uh, commemoration, but with a reflection on the nature of present and future struggles to dismantle and undo the legacy of the coup. So I wanted, of course, to acknowledge the many events and initiatives of the Chilean community here in Vancouver to mark this anniversary. Uh, on Monday, uh, Andres and I were fortunate enough to be uh, welcomed uh, at an extremely moving ceremony for uh, Desaparecidos held at the Chilean Housing Co-op in Collingwood. Um, and I wanted to thank people there for being uh, you know, so uh, kind in their hosting. Um, so in thinking about how to mark this anniversary uh, in our own political, cultural, and intellectual context here, it seemed vital to attend to the critical role that indigenous politics have played in the latest wave of mobilization and resistance aimed at fashioning a different Chile than the one imposed by military and economic violence and reproduced through the enforcement of a narrow, privatizing, extractivist, and neocolonial model of governance and everyday life. Among the efforts to achieve social justice suppressed by the dictatorship were the militant movements for indigenous autonomy and land reclamation that compelled, for a brief period of time, the Unidad Popular government to begin, however imperfectly, to address the material and cultural legacies of settler colonial dispossession in Chile. The consolidation of authoritarian neoliberalism in Chile was marked, amongst other things, by the 1979 Decree Law 2568, in which privatizing collective land ownership and disregarding ancestral land claims opened up Chile to highly capitalized agriculture, logging, mega development projects, and also decreed indigeneity out of existence. In dividing and privatizing communal lands, it decreed that the subdivided plots of land, and this is a quote from the law, would cease to be indigenous as well as their owners. We are immensely fortunate to have with us today two of the most prominent and path-breaking intellectuals and activists that have accompanied this latest phase of indigenous resistance and resurgence in Chile, recovering cultural, linguistic, and 
cosmological practices and traditions of anti-colonial resistance while exploring the possibility of radically transforming the political reality of Chile in the direction of decolonization and plurinationality. nationality. Notwithstanding the great differences between our own context here and that of Chile, it is nevertheless worth noting and perhaps exploring in our conversations today many striking parallels or affinities from the struggles against the ravages of capitalist extraction, manifesting in blockades and multiple forms of land defense, to debates about indigenous autonomy, sovereignty, and strategies of decolonization. So I think we have much to learn from Elisa Moncona and Fernando Baidekan's presentations on the realities of especially Mapuche struggles in today's Chile. We also hopefully have an opportunity, especially in our closing panel and our question and answer sessions, uh, to explore affinities and differences between indigenous struggles against settler colonialism in Chile and Canada. Not least here, where we are meeting, on the unceded occupied lands of Coast Salish peoples, including the Musqueam, Squamish, Squamish, Stolo, and tsleil nations. So um, before I pass uh, uh, the mic, hand over to uh, my colleague, Professor Eldon Yellowhorn from the Indigenous Studies Department at SFU, I just wanted to uh, point you to the, the schedule for today just because it wasn't posted online. So. Um, we will begin with a, a keynote talk by uh, Elisa Moncon, followed by questions and answers. Um, then we will have lunch. Lunch is provided, so please uh, stick around uh, so I don't have to take 40 delicious wraps home with me. Uh, then we will have a keynote by Fernando Palican. The keynote will be in Spanish, but it will be uh, presented with a uh, um, very um, detailed PowerPoint entirely translated into English by Andres. Um, so hopefully that bilingualism will work very well. And then we will have um, uh, a break followed by uh, two shorter presentations and a discussion by uh, Johnny Mack and Andres uh, Cabrera. So I will now pass the floor to Eldon for a couple of words of welcome. Uh, and then I will present. What is this? Bienvenido a la Universidad, Simon Fraser. Me llamo Kerno Amarillo. Good morning, and welcome to this symposium. My name is Eldon Yellowhorn. I'm the professor and professor in the Department of Indigenous Studies at Simon Fraser University. I would like to welcome you all to the homeland of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish nations. We're privileged to meet in this territory, and on such a beautiful day, it's great to see you all. Good morning. It's uh, a real pleasure and an honor to welcome Elisa Moncon. Uh, Elisa Moncon Antileo is a professor in the Department of Education at the Universidad de Santiago de Chile, where she researches the teaching of the Mapuche language, Mapuzangun. Uh, her lines of research are indigenous languages, bilingual intercultural education, and epistemic pluralism in education. She holds a PhD in humanities from the University of Leiden, and a second PhD in literature from the Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. In 2021, uh, Roncon was elected as one of the representatives of the Mapuche people to the Chilean Constitutional Convention, and was then named the convention's first president, um, holding the post from July 2021 to January 2022. The same year, Lancon was awarded the René Cassin Human Rights Award from the Basque government in recognition of her substantial contributions to the defense of human rights, and was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People and one of the Financial Times' 25 Most Influential <coughs> Women. Lancon has recently published as Mapu, Apotes de la Filosofía Mapuche para el Cuidado del Lof y la Madre Tierra, Colonialismo Cultural y Ontología Indígena en Comunidades Pehuenche del Alto Bio Bio, and her autobiography, Chayenko, Eco de la Cascada. So please uh, join me in welcoming our guest, Elisa Moncon. Mari Mari Pulamien. Pupikun mapu yi tunche, konant fachi chawen meu, bleni fei pial. Tvachi mapu muntunye yi tunche, mulai ni mapu. Wunenche mapunye, kos salish shengei. 
Squanish Chengay, Celil Wasul Nyay, Mapu Musquam Chengay Cafe, Sengs. Amelisa Lungkun, I come from Chile, from the Walmapu Nation, Mapuche Nation, and I want to thank all of you to stay here. Thank you for inviting us to share our history, our present in our country. Um, we know that we have a lot to know from you too. This is why uh, for us it's very important to go outside our country to, to see the world, to see the knowledge of the people and also what they are thinking about us because we believe we are not alone. We belong to the same humankind. We belong to the same sun. And we all belong to the earth, to the land. And we all of us need to care for our lands. This is our objective, why we are here. Me, I'm going to talk about parity and participation of the indigenous people in the first constitutional process. What we are creating here is a way of being plural, a way of being democratic, a way of being participatory. For this reason, this convention that I'm called to proceed over today will transform Chile into a plurinational Chile. A Chile that does not violate women's rights. A Chile that cares for Mother Earth, that cl cleans the rivers, the water against the domination. This is a struck of my discourse when I uh, it was elected the president of the Constitutional Convention in Chile. It was in July 7, 2021. This presentation seeks to describe the participation of women from indigenous people in the first constituent process and their influence in elaboration of a constitutional proposal that will ensuring women as subject of rights. The ability of Mapuche women to develop epistemological, political, and social proposal was demonstrated in the presidency of the convention and the articles drafted as part of it. In the same way, this presentation suggests that the patriarchal response from conservative interests was an important component of discourses that criticized the Constitutional Convention, affecting the levels of approval rating in the second referendum of September 2022. The constitutional process marked four important milestones regarding the participation of indigenous people in Chile national politics. First, the establishment of gender parity. Second, the presence of reserved seats for indigenous people. Third, the defense of social rights and participation of, soci of social movements which have always been excluded, exploited, and oppressed. Fourth, the defense of human and non-human rights, that is the right of nature that is the protection of Mother Earth by bringing together indigenous ontology, together with environmental and eco-feminist struggles, the defense of, of all life, itofil monien in the Mapuche language. Despite of the achievement risked along with the progressive and sector of the left, feminist and environmentalist in terms of agreements to draft the constitutional proposal, the participation of indigenous women revealed the lack of coherence in the discourse of these groups, who, while they supported the norms referring to the collective right of the indigenous people, 
did not re react to the racist attacks from the right, normalizing both the mistreatment of indigenous women representative within the Constitutional Convention and the attack on the idea of plurinationality. These attacks were used by reject option campaign in the second referendum on September 20, 22. In the electoral program of the progressive candidates, more than 100 of them, of the 155 elected conventionalists expressed their adherence to the plurinationality. When the referendum was lost, the political forces of left abandoned this approach and accepted a new process without reserve seat for indigenous people, bearing the discourse of plurinationality. In the face of the racism and harassment experienced by indigenous women in the aftermath of the second referendum, no speech has been made by feminist and progressive force in their defense. This reveals a fundamental problem, the absence of decolonizing process in the progressive left sectors and in the feminist movements, even though they describe themselves as anti-patriarchal but not anti-colonial, in order to counter the conservative sectors that practiced racism against indigenous women and excluded indigenous people from new constituent process, the second process today. That is, they sacrifice indigenous women and indigenous people. This is part of colonial history. It's, it is not something independent of colonial history. It is true that there has not yet been any deep process in Chile to con counteract the colonialism and these facts underlies all other problems. In the, in, it is why people say uh, pay attention to economic and social inequality, social classes with less or more wealth, or equality in with fever of greater rights. While the colonial fact that exists before these social and economic inequalities is not addressed. In this way, the left sacrificed the indigenous people, but the left has never criticized themselves as a, colonial, a colonialist left. As a left that is also a product of colonial and patriarchal that sacrifice indigenous people and their ontology uh, that protect mother health and all of the wills of nature. For this Western, westernized left, indigenous people were never political subjects. They were only pre-political subjects. Key uh, subjects of the urgent transformation but the world and our territory need in this phase of the ecological crisis and the violence that we experience. The underlying problem is repeated in the way where I uh, in this way described uh, Frank Fanon, who spoke in the divide, dividing line of colonialism. This colonial dividing line is practiced by the conservative sector. In this, uh, their trades, constitutional apartheid to make constitution by, but they practice it, uh, it with the complicity of silent of progressive and left parties, all of whom are subjected to deep process of intellectual colonialism, of epistemic colonialism. Indigenous women and Mapuche philosophy. Indigenous women, and especially those of the Mapuche people, have enjoyed in the constant struggle against state and colonial oppression with, which began century ago against the Spanish conquest. In this context, the, pos the position of women is not that of being victim, but uh, of fighting for their rights, 
for lands and nature, autonomy and self-determination, language and culture, our spirituality and protective ontology of motherhood against dispossession and also against patriarchal violence. In this way, they have generated different strategies of resistance, one of which is the collaboration in community networks uh, with other women, Mingo 2017. And today, with women from other indigenous people and the feminist movement from different latitudes, patriarchy, without being part of traditional Mapuche philosophy, was acquired through cultural colonialism. González Casanueva, 1969. However, women have continued to take part in political decision making. In traditional indigenous social organization, women had a position of authority. Our grandmothers are medicine leaders, machi, longo chief, messengers, working, ceremonial people, nienpin, and traditional educator, both among our ancestors and in more recent regeneration. In the context of economic impoverishment, women have resisted by using traditional knowledge, language, and culture and have provided a solution based on the technology of, in medicine, the economy of reciprocity with mother nation, the ceremony of connection with the territory and keeping the spirituality of the communities. The leadership of Mapuche women cannot be understood without knowing the indigenous philosophy dimension that's contained in their practices and that's distinguished from uh, uh, the other women. Hegemonic colonial society usually present indigenous traditions and practice as folklore, superstition coming from ignorant people. The Mapuche women recognize the land as the, her mother. The philosophy of Azumapu is born from this perspective. It is the philosophy of when vivir, kumemongen, living well. In the universe, there is a feminine energy there are feminine spirits that give strength and wisdom to women. So they, like men, are not alone, but they coexist with the other being of nature in the indissoluble and reciprocal relationship with the earth. The Mapuche philosophy of Azmapu can be recognized on the continent and in the world as ontology typical of First Nation. Escobar, Davalos, as a philosophy of the South, Dussel, and, and an indigenous epistemology. This ontology recognizes a plurality of entities, or human and non-human being, and form of life in contrast to Western culture, whose ontology recognizes only human being as being, endowed with life and rights, while the remaining special life subordinate to human will. This is a key of understanding how the Western development model destroyed the motherhood and how, it's, um, and how it had sought that to destroy our indigenous ontology to carry out uh, exploitation and, of resources in our territories. According to the Mapuche Cosmo Mugoni, the creation of the world the existence and origin of the world on, on which we live has a feminine origin. As described in the story, quien hizo la tierra en donde vivimos, who made the land or her in which we live. In the beginning, they say that there were not people in the Nagmapu, the land below. The universe was based in four, four lands, the Wenumapu, the, the land above, the Raining Wenumapu, uh, is the middle land, uh, the Nagumapu where we live, and uh, the, the Nagumapu, the land below, the Michimapu, the land, the underground. Kafu Wenokushe, the women, a woman, all women, the primal mother asked to the, to the good spirit to descend from the Wenumapu the land above to the Nagmapu, the land below, to create life. 
but the negative forces, embryos of not being chosen, uh, fought with the positive forces that from so much fighting and with great power, they fell like a ball uh, of fire uh, to the Rangingwe Numapo, the middle land, passing through it until they reached the Min Shemapo, the, under, the underground land. After a while, the negative force emerged from deeps uh, and formed the volcanoes. Uh, the positive force uh, remained hanging in the middle land, forming the stars. They cried so much that with their tears, they formed the river and seas. The primal mother, saying that the land below was alone, decided to send her daughter to a settle down. The girl walked on the stone, and they hurt her feet until their, uh, their bled. From this uh, bleeding, gra uh, bleeding uh, grass, flower, plant, and, and butterfly were born. And in her wake, new life was created. So that she will not be alone, the, pri the primal mother immediately sent a young man. And together they created a large family that gradually populated the land uh, on which we live today. The primal mother gave them a mission of not forgetting their origin, taking care of each other, and taking care of the earth, uh, speaking in Mapudumon, and performing ceremony on the land to have a good life. This is from female spirit Longcon 2019. As can we see, see in the story, every Mapuche has a role to take care of each other, to take care of the land and nature, and not forget their spiritual origins. According to us Mapu, the Mapuche philosophy, uh, there are four philosophical categories that allow us to understand the organization of all lives. The Athmonien, uh, contain a body of value and principle. The normonian refer to the rules for living necessary for the coexistence of human beings, including other beings on the earth. The etophilmonian is the recognition of all forms of life, human and non-human, um, and the kumemonian is the articulation of uh, the other three categories in balance. In this way, Asmapu philosophy guides the direction of human action in the face of the urgent problem of the crisis we are experiencing. Ecological crisis, wars, forced displacements, migration, extinctions, drugs, different forms of violence, and something no less important, the loss of meaning of life in this world. The struggle of indigenous women is not an identity struggle, nor was it part of the convention. It is a political struggle. Is that is, uh, is, a, is for the right of the people, but it is also against the oppression inherited by colonial system that instilled racism and patriarchy, imposing a way of life alien to the people and to the women. It is against this colonial order because there is a central fact that we cannot avoid the colonial fact. The uh, fact that we were invited, colonized, and enslaved, this gave rise to a world order that, that is colonial, as Enrique Dussel said. It, it is not only about economic inequalities. A colonial and slave order has existed since 40 years. Uh, 1492. That is why it is insufficient to talk only about economic inequalities today. It is necessary to talk about the colonial fact that created a world or the organized from a colonial and a slaves exist imposed on America and Africa. It is not just a world or the organized only around social classes and economical inequality. I miss a sir already said this, his speech in colonialism, 1955, uh, as did Franz Fanon in 
1961. This was what our Pehuense sister from Alto Bio Bio, Berta and Nicolas Akintreman said in their Shethun language at the end of uh, 1990. Um, when they defended their community and territory against the hydroelectric plants, when they went to Congress and the people laughed at uh, uh, them along this lawyer, with lawyer and the political class. Indigenous women have always been not on can cancelled or sacrificed when an important economic project and and an important political process are staked. When women speak their mother tongue and wear their traditional customs, they are making their territories, their bodies, which are one and the same with the collective right of their people and their knowledge, but they are also influencing the present on their communities. Mapuche women are not only indigenous, but they are also workers, peasants, urban leaders, professionals, and much more, even if they have different individual identities. Colonial knowledge are defi defined women from the outside, from, uh, from the perspective of people who are not indigenous. Thus, it, it is said that, them, they, that they are passive poor, discriminated against rural, marginal, and urban. However, this definition not only partially reflects a condition of colonial society, but also included their leading and central role. It is forgotten that their contribution is essential to the preservation of cultural knowledge, that they are wise and have taken great leadership in the defense of their rights. The constituent process of Chile. In the constitutional graph, the people enrich plurinationality, a fundamental political proposal that enables of the transition to a new intercultural society. An intercultural society that respects the right of people that recolonizes itself to the, uh, uh, to the extent that it assumes new form of government a different kind of relationship between the human being and nature. Plurinationality, plurinationality promotes substantive equality and overcome the existing relationship of violence based on the direct participation of people on the permanent dialogue between them. There are they, uh, four key milestones were articulated in the plurinationality proposal. First, gender parity. The Constitutional Convention of Chile was the first democratically elected political body with gender parity. It was initially composed of 155 conventional members of which 77 were women and 78 were men. After months of work, an elected member was removed due to his deplorable behavior. He had been elected by faking out the seat that he did not have. For this reason, 154 elected members wrote the first draft of the new constitutional proposal. The women belonging to the different organization, including political party from the right wing, center, and left wing, others to social movement, environmental groups, and others to the indigenous people. Women made it possible to ensure the gender demand, such as the right to reproductive health, to, the, to make decisions about their own body, as well as the right to life, uh, to live a life free of violence. This right is fundamental, given the status of gender violence in our country, which uh, mainly affected women. The women of indigenous people assisted on recognition of linguistic and territorial rights, as well as the defense of nature and water. In addition, they enriched the debate with new topic of and theme, although not all of them because approved article as they did not achieve uh, at, uh, the two-thirds quorum. 
such as uh, uh, provision of transhumans and the recognition of indigenous genocides. The reserve seat for the indigenous people were the second millstone towards the plurinationality with the convention, within the convention. The breakthrough uh, was an uh, unprecedented historical even in Chile static poli politics by introducing for the first time the collective right of indigenous people to have guaranteed representation in the electoral process in Chile. In fact, this is the, time, the first time that Chile complied with the provisions of ILO Convention 169, refer, uh, ratified on September uh, 2008 uh, uh, regarding the political participation of indigenous people. 17 indigenous representatives were elected, seven Mapuche, two Aymara, and one from each of the other indigenous people, Chango, Rapanui, Licanantai, Diaguita, Quechua, Acoya, Gahuascar, and Yagán. There were no seat for people from African descent and also for the self indigenous people. The indigenous population of Chile, according to the um, 2017 census consists of a total of more than 2 million of inhabitants, the majority of whom are Mapuche, uh, 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 1,745,000 uh, people, close to 79.8% uh, of indigenous. The indigenous women that one seat in the Constitutional Convention were not affiliated with political parties, but rather belonged to the grassroots organization, community, or rather organized group. They are Isabella Mamani, Aymara, Isabel Godoy, Goya People, Tiare Aguilera, Arapanui, Lidia González, Yagan People, Margarita Vargas, Kawaska People, and Francisca Linconao, Natividad Yanquileo, Rosa Catrileo, and myself by the Mapuche people. Carmen Caifil and Carmen Jaramillo were also elected, but due to the parity correction, they had to give up their seat to the men who made up with the respective pair, Victorino Antilev and Alexis Caiwal. In this context, it is important to mention that in my own presidency in Constitutional Convention was regarded both in Chile as abroad, as a substantive achievement of the Mapuche Reserve seat that promotes my candidacy without, uh, within the Constitutional Convention and a very important historical symbolic chain for the Chilean politics. That said, to quote, to quote and also Barikana, who is, who is here. Um, the, the incorporation of the social right inside the, the proposal. The current uh, Chilean constitution gave way to the neoliberal model with a subsidiary state, where the power of the state to address social rights is weak, unlike bis uh, business economic power, which is also subsidized by the state. This system gave rise to the privatization of social rights, education, health, pension, and in practice, de depended um, the inequality of the population by favoring the upper class elite and displacing the majority of the Chilean into social and economic and marginalization. The proposal for a new constitution by the Constitutional Convention in and, and treated social rights, including the right to health, education, housing, and decent uh, pension, with an inclusive and equal democracy that recognizes dignity, freedom, for the substantive equality of human beings and their indissoluble relationship with nature. The composition of the Constitutional Convention with representative of all social movement also allows sectors that are not part of the political elite to participate in the design of the new constitution because the political party, due to their abandonment of social rights, were part of the crisis of the representation in 
the country. The enchurning of nature and non-human rights was the third milestone. The constitutional proposal recognized the human rights to water, the right of wetlands, the restitution of the right of nature, among others. These rights are based on the principle of human interdependence with nature. It is currently known, although we do not want to assume that the pandemic and the global warming are anthropogenic, product of human action, because Western and Eurocentric society disposes the land of its strengths through its extractivism of the rich, uh, uh, the richness of the land. Human rights cannot be ex exercised unless the right of nature are guaranteed. This is include the right to water, land, and a pollution-free environment. Indigenous women political participation also help to problematize parity and gender equality both in society at large of indigenous communities themselves. Their presence broke with gender stereotypes rooted in society what, that usually classify indigenous people as patriarchal, that thus ignore the impact of women in the history of their people. Without doubt, the leadership of indigenous women with the Constitutional Convention made a difference by introducing a new element into the democratic debate, such as the impact of women on the history of the country, of their defense and other history, because there is no only one, but, or by promoting the need to recognize the right of nation. Before the Constitutional Convention, there were no indigenous women uh, who had reached a position of representation in the state without belonging to a political party. Traditionally, there, these topics were not part of the discussion, nor was there a woman, a woman in a traditional leadership roles such as the Mashi Francisca Linconau. Mashi Francisca Linconau is an outstanding spiritual leader. She actively participated in the first constitutional process. Her work helped to make visible the condition of the violation of territorial, political, and cultural rights, as well as the colonial uh, discrimination that, that is reproduced in the speeches of the opposition uh, within the convention. She also helps empower the other indigenous women and contributed to uh, increasing their visibility in the aim of influence and decision making. Her activism contributed to putting the discussion of racial violence onto the agenda. But there were also many difficulties in the constitutional process. A constant problem throughout the process were the manifestation of colonial experts by patriarchy and racism. The racist attacks were produced within the convention and were promoted by right-wing women from the main right-wing party, the Unión Democrata Independiente and the far-right party, Partido Republicano, entre, among them, Teresa Marinovich, Rocío Cantuaria, and Marcela Cubillo. From there, these attacks were produ reproduced in various, in various places, um, on social networks, in the media, Maggie Francisca Linconau, who was already the object of this attack before the convention, was criticized for her role in spiritual and health leaders, as well as for the use of Mapudungun, her mother tongue, in plenary sessions. For example, Marinovi, one of the conventional delegates, attacked Maggie Linconau on Twitter, accusing her putting on a show for using her mother tongue, Mapudumon. Another problem presented was public dis dissent by indigenous leaders from radicalized groups who denigrated the work of the Maggi Francisca and her president, either through the media or through protest uh, and activism 
at the Constitutional Convention. This species follow the colonial pattern that this despises uh, indigenous female leadership, dialogue as a method, and even endorses political activism. Like I said, uh, confiero, that is to say, with the comments. To paraphrase Fran Fano, they are the place that the words the, uh, of heard have usually occupied in a colonial society is below, below the line of non-being. This is the case of indigenous place in Chile, non-being, Long Kong 2023. Fanon say that the colonial society separates society by creating a, debate, a dividing line between zone of being and zone of non-being. In the zone of non-being, there, there are those without rights, and um, in the zone of being, those who enjoy their rights. People without political, linguistic, cultural, or territorial rights are below this dividing line. The dividing line is product of the colonial fact. Something that we cannot ignore, well, it has allowed us to reproduce a vision of society that has trans tra transcending the structure of the state and the different generation of Chileans. It is intellectual colonialism, epistemological colonialism that runs through society so that the majority has naturalized the oppression of the indigenous people. And from this perspective, the action of the reserve uh, seats have been judged and the proposal for a new constitution that in the opinion of the rejection campaign, guarantee privilege to the people and not rights. That is a way to promote racial hatred with naturalized racism. The women who led the process have also been persecuted, including its president. Digital newspaper often post articles containing hate speech against Elisa Longcon and encourage her political cancellation. An example of this is Rafael Gomusio's opinion on conservative paper ex ante, who has already written more than five articles with the same insulting tenor. The way, uh, quotation, the way in which, in which Elisa Longcon used her surname has allowed her to have political disability, close quotation. And you, because according to this same author, she failed in her intention to represent the Mapuche people. Here, the story of suppressing, suppressing or canceling the voice um, of indigenous women is repeated. Berta and Nicolas Akintreman ex experience the same thing when they defend the Pehuenche community of Alto Bio Bio against Ralph Kodan. Our grandmothers, and sisters experience the same thing. And today, it is experienced by young indigenous women who are racialized and discriminated against. But this is a part of the colonial fact. It is part of intellectual and epistemic colonialism to uh, invalidate our voice against a model that destroys motherhood and to cancel our voice when we speak against the dispossession of lands, rights, language, and social, social organization, and our ontology. It is part of colonial process to cancel indigenous women like Interman sister, the Mashi Francisca Lincona, or, or Elisa Longcon. Yesterday and today, there are indigenous women placed in the zone of non-being, placed beneath the dividing line to be attacked and cancelled. Unfortunately, with the silence of, and complicity of progressive actors who, since intellectual colonial, have not appreciated the relevance of colonial fact to understand the great problem that we live in the present increased hit by ecological destruction, the lack of epistemology necessary, uh, necessary response to build a better life in different societies. They can of offer nothing but colonial analysis 
when an indigenous woman like Elisa no longer even have the right to her name. This vision of society has been reproduced in the structure of the state and passed on the different generation of Chilean, in which the majority have normalized the oppression of the indigenous people. It is from this per perspective um, that the action of these holding the indigenous reserve seat at the convention were judged. The campaign of reject option in the second referendum popularized the idea that the constitutional proposal merely guaranteed privileges to the indigenous people and not rights. In conclusion, to conclude the participation of indigenous women in political is essential to build more inclusive, equitable, <coughs> equitable to a representative society where their boys contribute to democracy and good living. The indigenous women at the convention, without being, without being women who declared themselves feminists, contributed to, to the debate of feminism and parity. They did so by highlighting the importance of the indigenous women's struggle in defense of, of political rights, of territory, of mother earth, but also by ensuring the central role of the debate on colonialism, racism, and patriarchy that shape the, the structure of domination. The presence of indigenous women allow us to reveal that gender parity alone is not enough to advance in a struggle for social justice and the defense of nature. Women who embrace the conservative political project defend this structure without questioning their role in reproducing the, the conservative uh, knowledge. These conservative women defend the colonial fact and patriarchy in order to enjoy a certain privilege compared to the other women who do not belong to the most privileged sectors. Therefore, the, the key is to question the colonial fact and the patriarchal form that accompany. Um, and then address the practical consequence. This has a political participation and collective decision making where women work together to build a better life. Indigenous women also problematize gender, race, and class oppression in an intersectional way, empowering women and highlighting their voice and the struggle of the in, of indigenous community. Without a, without a doubt, there is still a long way to go to understand their struggle. On the way, on one hand, the decolonization of progressive politics, and on the other hand, the decolonization of indigenous male leadership. They continue the fight of Nicolas Kinter, Nicolas Akinterman a prominent leader and activist of Mapuche people in Chile, known for her commitment to the defense of indigenous rights and her fight for the preservation of culture of the environment. Her legacy is fundamental to understanding the struggle of indigenous women in Chile around uh, and around the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>